Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will set up everything we need to start with our running app. So first of all, we will set up our dependencies that we need. We will set up um, something in our manifest file and we will set up the layout files, which I already prepared. So you will be able to get all that from my GitHub repository in this video's description, just as usual. So let's jump into Android Studio and create a new project. Select empty activity, click on next. I will call this running app YouTube, choose a name, whatever you want, choose um, Kotlin as a language, of course, and API level 21 is fine. Then we can click on finish. All right, there we go. So let's actually paste our dependencies in here in our build.gradle file. As I said, you can just click the link in this video's description to get to my GitHub repository and copy and paste them or you can simply just copy the whole branch or pull the whole branch of my github repository so you don't need to set up anything for this project so you can just start right away in the next video however i will quickly go through our dependencies that we need here first of all we have material design dependencies that should be pretty clear to you i think just for some design components such as recycler view bottom navigation and things like that. We have our architectural components for stuff like view model. Then we have room for our database to save our runs. We have the Kotlin extensions and coroutine support for room so we can use coroutines in combination with room. Then we have the dependencies for coroutines in general. Coroutine lifecycle scopes, so stuff like view model scope, we will use that in this series navigation components, which we'll need for navigation, obviously. We will use Glide for loading the images, so basically the screenshots of our runs when we finish them. Then we have Google Maps location services, so we are actually able to track the user's location. For that, we will need those two dependencies. We have a bunch of dependencies for Dagger, for dependency injection. And one of the next videos will actually be about Dagger because I think it's not clear to everybody of you why we use Dagger here, why it's a good practice to use Dagger and how it actually works in general, so not in detail. But I think I should make a video about that in this series because I never made a tutorial about Dagger itself or dependency injection of any kind. So that's why I will explain the basic stuff of Dagger in a video in this series. Then we will have the dependencies for easy permissions, which will just make it very easy for us to check location permissions and request them. We will use Timber, which is a very cool logging library that makes it much easier than the default logging. We will have MP Android chart, which is for our line chart. So the chart in our statistics fragment, and we will have some lifecycle extensions, which we will need for our service. Then what we also need to add in our build.gradle app file are some compile options here inside of this Android block because otherwise our app would crash. We need to specify the JVM version basically. And we also need to apply some more plugins up here. That is the Kotlin cap plugin on the one hand. You should probably know that. That is just for this cap keyword which we used down here, for example, that is the Kotlin version of a notation processor. And we also have that plugin for navigation components, which we will need here. So make sure to add that too. That is it for our build.gradle app file. But we also need to add something in our build.gradle project file. We need to add a class path here also for those navigation components. And we also need to add a line below here in this all projects block for our chart basically. And then if you have done that, we can finally click on sync now and hope that everything is working. That looks good. Now we can jump into our manifests file because here we need to make some more adjustments. First of all, I want to add some permissions up here. The first one will be access fine location and we'll also need the permission access course location. So those two will be needed to access the user's location to track him basically. But we will also need the permission access background location. That is a permission that is only needed for API level 29. 
they made some changes to location permissions so that you now need to explicitly request that access background location if you want to track the location of your user in the background. So in a service basically, and we will exactly do this in this series here. So that's why we have to request this permission. And when the user launches this app, then he will be prompted with a dialog to accept location permissions. And then we, he will have three options. The first will be to allow location tracking all the time. Then he will have an option to only um, allow it in the foreground and he will have an option to deny all of those permissions and we will actually need all of those permissions here so the user must accept all of them and as a last permission that we will add here that will be the permission foreground service which we'll need for our service and actually we would also need internet permission to track our location but since Google Maps SDK already comes with this internet permission and merges that into our manifest file, we don't need to specify that here. So the next thing I want to add in this manifest file is an attribute in our activity tag here, which will be the launch mode of our activity. And I will set this to single task. That means that only a single task of our activity will exist at one time. So basically a single instance and there can't be two instances at the same time. I encountered some bugs that sometimes the activity was started in a new instance and then basically the data from the other activity was lost and didn't show in the new activity. And that's why I added this launch mode. So we basically fixed that bug with it. And as a last step, we will paste some metadata tags inside of our application tag, which will be needed for Google Maps. The first one is just the version of our Google Play services that is already contained in the dependencies we included here. But as you can see, we also need to include an API key. Since behind the scenes, this Google Maps SDK that we included here in our dependencies will make requests to the Google servers. And for that, we need to specify an API key so Google can actually identify who makes those requests. And you will have to get that API key from the Google Cloud Developer Console, which I will also show you in this video how you can actually get that. And then we will add this API key to our strings XML file. So this will actually be recognized here. So we will be able to get the API key from this website, which is the Google Maps um, documentation and here it is stated how you can get your API key. You can get this link to this website from this video's description of course. So the first step is to go to this Google Cloud Platform Console. So let's open that up and see what happens. The page will load and we will be prompted to enter our country. Of course enter your country here. Accept those terms of service. I won't get any email updates. So press agree and continue then what we need to do is we need to create a project in this Google Cloud Platform console here. You can do this on this button here, create project. Then you have to choose a name for that project. I will choose whatever, I don't know, Android Devs project. That project can be used for um, several apps. So I wouldn't choose the name running app here because you can connect several apps to this project. It's similar to Firebase console if you know that. Then we can click on create. And after that, these options here should load. So you have a bunch of options here to choose from. We will choose the Maps SDK for Android here. You can see that is Maps for your native Android app. That is exactly what we want here. Let's click on that. Then this page will open and we simply click on enable here. And after that, this metrics page should be displayed for you. And now we are actually able to create our API key. For that, we need to open that navigation menu here um, and go to APIs and services under credentials. So let's click on that. And here you can see here we can create credentials now. Let's click on that and create an API key. And now it is creating it. And here you can see it is displayed for you. And this is the key that you will need to copy and paste in your Android, um, Android Studio project string XML file. So let's actually do this. We can click this button here to copy it. Then we can go back to Android Studio 
And you can see currently we don't have that strings um, Google Maps key string there in our XML file. So let's open our RAS folder values strings.xml. Here we can create a new string with the name Google Maps key. And inside of this string tag, we can now paste our API key here. And now when we go back to our manifest file, then you can see this string file is actually found. And as a last thing, I will paste my letter files here. I don't think I need to show this on video. You should know how to do this. And as I said, you can just get these layout files from my GitHub repository. I will make some changes in the layout folder here, in the drawable folder and in the styles.xml file. Oh, and when I now think about it, I will also make some changes in the strings XML file and in the colors XML file for our color theme. So what I recommend to do is to just pull my whole GitHub branch and then simply work with that. So you don't need to copy all that stuff over to your project. That's just unnecessary and annoying. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please leave me a comment below and tell me what you think about that. Also, if there is something I can improve on, then please let me know that. That would make me really happy to improve my content. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.